Hi there, this is Art and Such with my Rainbow Loom tutorial for Olive from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. She goes with the rest of my set for that movie. For this pattern, you're going to need white bands, black bands, orange bands, and skin tone. And I'm using a couple of small blue beads for the eyes. I can also show you how to make those with blue bands and I'm going to thread the eyes on using dental floss. Now this next part is optional. I will show you how to do it, but I won't be doing it on my figure this time. And that is to add the little beads, seed beads, for the pattern on the dress. I would suggest a purple or a brown. I'll show you how to thread that on as well in just a minute. Uh, you're going to want a C-clip or two, a hook and holding hook, your loom in the offset configuration, and I think that's everything. So <clears throat> before we start, I'm gonna show you how to make the, the little pattern pieces. So if you do wanna have beads on, you're gonna be making about 27 of these. And what you do, you take a seed bead or slightly larger bead, put a piece of dental floss or thin wire through, grab a white bead, Put your floss through the white bead, uh, sorry, band, and then it's going to come back over, back through the seed bead from the opposite direction. This is also what we're going to do for the eyes, so I'll show you this, uh, this procedure a little later when we do the eyes as well. If you're not doing the beads on your bands, you can skip this part altogether and jump ahead a minute or so into the video. Now, this is kind of tricky. I've got nails right now, so if I pinch here, I'm going to um, break the band. So you want to sort of pull, but not using your nails. And sometimes it takes a couple of tries. These do have very small holes in them. And gradually slide it until your bead is part way through the band. So if you want to have this as accents to show the pattern, you can make um, about 27 of these, 27 to 30. And you could also play around with adding colored bands into the mix as well. Now let's make the arms together. I've decided these are a little bit long for my liking, so we're going to have one less black and one less skin tone than what you see here, but the format will be the same. We're going to take two black bands, wrap them on the hook, one, two, three times. Take a single black band, Stretch it, twist it, double it back onto itself, nice and tight. You can put this onto the loom and use this as a cap band and loop up if that's easier for you. We're going to pull it over and replace the other end. I'll show you once what this would look like on the loom if you wanted to do it that way. Stretch, twist, double over, put it onto a peg. And you could do this in a row if you wanted. We're going to have a total of four doubled over black bands. Transfer the bottom piece, stretch it down, grab the doubled over band by pushing back through the top piece. I'm, I'm always more comfortable doing this on the hook, but like I said, I'll show you both ways in case. Loop up and remove. You can do this whole section like that if you want. It will come out a little straighter that way as well. I'm going to do it on the hook for the sake of expediency. So we've put it onto one doubled over, onto a second doubled over block. This will be our third, and then we'll have a fourth. And the other thing is if you want to do one arm on the hook and then one on the loom, that's fine too. Now I'm switching to skin tone, and we're going to put this onto four doubled over single skin tones. So a little chain of them. Kind of sad to stretch out my bands, but in it for a good cause. Stretch, twist, pull it over. On the end, pull it through. Replace. Two more of those. And last one. Double it over again. Then we're going to be switching back to white. Grab two whites. Put them on the end of the hook and pull through the bands, the skin tone bands. And a second set of double weights. And one more time. 
Now this next part is optional as well, but if you want the little puff at the end of the sleeve, you can get that by taking two white bands, stretching them, pulling it over the arm, and then you're going to stretch, twist, pull it over again, and you can give it a third wrap if you want it to be a little bit tighter, which I think I will because this feels like it's moving. And push that into place just at the bottom of the white. Now let's do the other arm. It's going to go, we're going to go a little bit faster here. And if you're feeling this is in the way, you can always move your first arm to another hook to hold it. Two blocks, wrap one, two, three. Hold onto a set of four doubled over singles. So this is the first one in the set. And a second doubled over single. Three. Four. And five. Switching to, oh, sorry, I did want four. One, two, three, four. I did five the first time, that's why I'm thinking five. We only want four. I'm glad I caught that there. Three skin tones, otherwise we would have had uneven arms. Second doubled over single skin tone. And one more. Switch to white. Three sets of double white bands. That's one. Two. And three. And I'm going to make that cuff piece again by taking two whites, stretching them out, popping it over the end of the arm, twisting it and bringing it back over, twisting it and bringing it back over and rolling it into place. Let's prepare our leg pieces and then I think we're going to go straight from there onto the loom. So for the shoes, the running shoes, take two whites, wrap one, two, three times on the hook, pull onto double white bands, replace, take two more white bands, put them on the end of the hook, wrap one, two, three times, bring half of that first piece over. So we're going to lift and stretch the loops on the side closest to the end and pull it over the newly wrapped piece so that it now sits in the middle. Take two more white bands and bring them through all of the others while trying to keep them in order if you can. And we're going to go back to skin tone and this looks like one, two, three, four, five sets of double skin tone mats. Get some out here to work from. So take two together, put them on the end, pull them through. That's one, two sets, three, four, and five. And then we want one set of double white bands. So take two whites together and slide those through and we'll repeat this for the second leg. So back to white, two bands wrapped one, two, three times, pulled onto double white bands. Replace, take two whites, wrap them on the end of the hook. One, two, three times, pull the first piece over the new piece, so it sits in the middle, and this goes onto one more set of double white bands. Place and five sets of double skin tone. One, oops, slid right off there. I don't think I caught the first, the other one that first time through. It's one, two, three, four, and five. And onto two, 
to white and you can put this aside just put it down on the side anywhere it will hold together from there and we're coming to the loom you can grab my my picture here okay we're going to come down twice in the center with sets of double skin tone bands come down from the second center to the second right with double skin tones and repeat on the opposite side. So to the second left. And then we're gonna come down. Um, now this is where it gets a little bit uh, different because if you are using the bands with the beads on them, this is what it's gonna look like. You'll put down one white band from the second peg to the third peg down on either side and one from the third peg to the fourth peg on either side and then the next band you put you'll put a second layer on each of those and it will be the band with the bead on it and I've taken mine off but I'll quickly quickly demo here with an eye bead give me one second these are a little bit easier to get onto so if you want to highlight it, accessorize with the little beads. You'll take the beads that have the bands that have the beads on, but you would have brown in the middle, and just stretch it out as the top layer for each of these. And that's what you're going to repeat on each set going down. So basically the top ones are going to be the ones that have the beads on them. Now since I'm not doing that this time, I'm just going to put down two blank plain white bands onto each set and the rest of the loom I'm going to fill with sets of double white bands. So one last time if you want to have the brown beads on or purple or whatnot then the top bands you lay down will be the ones that have the beads on them. Otherwise just follow me we're gonna fill up the rest with double whites. this up for you when it's finished or almost finished here. I love having my nails are really growing out long right now and they've been very handy but so fine they get in the, the way a little bit I keep clicking them together. And the other day I actually scratched an itch on my face and I've got a little red mark there. They're due for a trim I think but after the video. This is more important right? So each of these sets I'm laying down two bands at a time and some of you will have um, beads on the top, threaded onto the top bands that you're using. I hope I've explained that well there. Okay, take two white bands, put them on the end of your hook which has your legs on it, and slide your legs on top, keep a little tension on that, and this will go across from the bottommost peg on one side of the loom to the bottommost peg across, and pull the bands the legs are on up over the center bottommost peg. Your arms can now go onto the second pegs down on either side. You want to try to lay it so that it's curling inwards and that might mean having to flip it or angle your hook or pull it off backwards, but find the, the way that works for you. See, I'm thinking this one I'll have to take it off, put my hook back through and then place. 
That ought to do it. Okay, there we go. Oh, one thing I didn't mention is if you want to give her a necklace after, you can thread a bead onto a piece of thread and then tie that around the neck at the very end. But that's something I, I did without. Now, this looks like fourth, one, two, three. We're gonna have three single holding bands forming triangles across the third pegs down and the fourth pegs down and the fifth pegs down. And then the next one will be a doubled over single triangle. If you're having a hard time with that, it is okay to leave it single. This just gives um, cinches in the waist a little bit before we add our, our side extensions. And the rest of these will be single triangles so you don't have to twist them around again. One keeps falling here to the side again. We're going to cover all the way, all of the rows across until we get to the bottom. And the reason we do this is because we want the, we don't want everything to stretch apart with big holes in between. This keeps it nice, nice and tight. Now I think the only thing we've got left to do for the body is the side extension and whether you've used beads or not, you will be looping everything the same way. So our side extension for the body, we're going to make a chain taking a single white and wrapping it one, two, three times. And this will be pulled onto eight sets of double white bands. This is one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I just remember we've got the collar to do too, but I'll give you a couple of options on that in just a minute. Let me triple check for you where this one gets laid. I think it's on two. Mm -hmm. Five, six, seven, six. I believe this will go onto the sixth peg down on the side. So transfer the bands from your hook onto the sixth peg down from the side. And we don't want to get into the cap band of the chain. We want to get into the little space above. So you can sort of stretch it out and get your hook in to not that very bottom wrapped, but into the next space of the chain above. We're going to stretch that down and put that onto the bottommost peg on the side. So there will be a little nub, a little knob sticking out after. So grab a piece out of each chain and we're gonna pull it out and put it over the next peg. Grab another piece from the piece above, the chain above, pull it over. We'll continue to do this all the way up. And this also keeps it nice and snug and secure. You wanna try to do it without twisting it too much if you can. Chain for the other side, single white, wrapped one, two, three, pulled onto eight sets of double white bands. We'll go onto the sixth peg down on the opposite side. So we're going, this is about four pegs down from the arm. Find the bottom piece of the chain just above that securing band. Stretch it down onto the bottommost peg and grab one piece out of each chain to pull over the 
pegs that are in between. I guess you could do it with your finger if it's easier, but I like using the hook. Now for the, I'm just going to tell you here, this, this part is a little tricky. I'm going to show you how to make the ruffle collar. Now what I did is I stretched it across from one side to the other and this is kind of how it came out. But it showed up on the back side, not where the beads were, and I had to pull that over the neck. So I literally picked it up and pulled it over the neck piece when the time came. And then I grabbed a, a couple of pieces from the ruffle and stretched them over the arm. And you can even wrap a couple extra bands there for thickness. So that is one way you can do it. The other option you have is to make a longer collar piece. I'll, I'll show you how this is made in a minute and you'll, you'll kind of see how, see what I mean. And then attach it here and here when you're done and cinch it in underneath by pulling through, grabbing a piece, pulling it to the back to, to sort of position it. So I'm going to show you how to make it the way that I made it. And I'll, I'll try to kind of explain your other options. I'm going to take a single white, get it ready on my hand, and then take a single wrap one, two, three times, two or three times. Another wrap, one, two, three. This is the third one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, six, one, two, three. And when it's as long as you want it to be, I think I'll do one more. One, two, three. You're gonna pull it all onto that single band. So at this point, you can put this on the side. You can make it longer. If you're putting it on the side or making it longer, then you can attach it afterwards, like right here to the Sorry, it's so much weight in the background. You can attach it to the shoulder on one side, attach it to the shoulder on the other. And so this would be an after the fact thing. And to do that, you would, when all else is done, go through from the back, grab that, pull it to the back and put it on a C-clip. And then you could cinch it in, as I said, towards the middle. Or you can do as I'm doing and lay it across the second pegs down and we will loop it in and then adjust it so that it covers the shoulders a little bit. Uh, again, I hope that's made sense, but those are your, your two main options for the collar, unless there's something else that you personally want to try. We're going to loop up the sides first. So go under the, the top bands on that bottommost peg on the side, and you're going to try and get the two bottom ones. Open part of the hook is facing up. We're going to push back, grab the bottom two. I'm trying to get a good view for you here. Use your fingers if you need to or change the angle. Pull it up and over. Push back. Take your bottom two. Bring them up, forwards, and over. We're pushing back the holding bands because we don't want to loop that off and we're going inside the extensions because we want to keep that on and tight too. We're going to continue looping up until we reach the arms. Now as I said, if you've got beads on your bands, none of this will be changed. It's still going to be the same ones that you're looping and the beads really shouldn't be in your way. Get two bands each time, and when you get to the second peg from the top, you're going to reach in, get the bottom two pink or skin tone, and bring those to the second peg down in the center. Let's go back to the bottom on the other side and loop up, same thing, same way. Get your bottom two bands, bring them forward. We'll do this until we get to the second peg from the top.
reach under the arm for the two skin tone, bring those to the second center peg. And we're going back to the bottom of the loom. And you're gonna grab the bottom two and just bring them up forward. And then loop straight upwards until you reach the very top of the loom. Bottom two bands only for on every single set. Oh, oh dear, this came off. Mm, I lost my ruffles. Let me just put that back. I don't want to be ruffleless. Hmm. Hold on. Just to go under there. And onto here. There. That ought to do it. Okay, now I can continue looping up. Oh, and um, when you get, sorry, I didn't mention that already. When you get to the third peg from the top, we actually want to pull the ruffles over that peg so that we don't loop over the ruffles. If you've already gone that far, then just loop back twice, pull that down and loop forward again. Hold on to the bands in the top center peg and you can remove the rest from your loom. Now, if you've used larger beads for the pattern pieces of the dress, or if you've used beads with larger holes in them, you can press them through to the side that the ruffles are on. If your beads are really small and, and or fit really tightly onto the bands, then it's gonna be hard to move them. So what we'll do is move the ruffle instead, and I'll show you how you can do that in just a second this carefully so we don't break the bands. When most of your body is removed, you can put your hook through the bands in the top center peg and remove the rest. Now, let's say that you use beads and you can't see them from the front, you see them from the back though. What you would do now is take your hook out or push it down, take the ruffled part, bring it over and over, and that will flip the side so that it's showing on the, on the back or the, the new front. Okay, let's put this down for a minute and we are gonna come back to the loom to make the hair and the face. So we're working with orange bands now and we are gonna come down, or we're gonna come from the top center to the top right with double orange, top center to the top left with double orange, and twice down on each row with double orange bands. And then I'm going to have to pause for a minute, but I'll be right back. Okay, get your skin tone out and let's come down three times in the center with double skin tone bands and twice on either side with double skin tone bands. Hold this up for you right away. Two bands from the fourth side to the fifth center. I guess that's the sixth center. Um, no, the fifth peg down on the side to the sixth peg down in the center and repeat that on the opposite side. And we're gonna take a single orange, pull it across the second pegs down into a triangle holding band doubled over single skin tone across the third pegs down. Skip the next the next row and a doubled over skin tone band across the fifth pegs down. For this remaining one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the eyes. I think I am actually gonna make a doubled over single first. Mm, no, no I'm not. We're just gonna take a single skin tone, get that ready. If you're using 
Mm -hmm. If you're using bands, I'll show you that method first. You'll take two bands of the eye color that you like. Wrap each one one, two, three times on the hook. Leave a little space in between. Put your skin tone band on the end and then pull both of your wrapped eye color bands over. If you've got beads you're using and they have a larger hole, like if you want to do white beads and draw on the pupil for instance, or you're using blue beads, you can do the same, transfer them from the hook. And if you're using smaller beads, we'll use our dental floss method again. So this time we're going to put the two beads on to the floss or wire together. You could also use a beading needle and thread would work fine. Go through your skin tone, pull the floss back over and back through both of the beads. This should pinch a little bit easier than those C beads. These ones are a little, have a slightly bigger hole. And the band that has your eyes will go onto the fourth pegs down. Now I like the idea of using um, a doubled over skin tone to make the face tighter in the middle. The problem is we're going to be flipping this over after and we don't want uh, extra bands to be blocking your sight of the eyes from the other side. You'll, you'll see what I mean right away. I'm going to put my hook in between the band with the eyes on it, separate and pull one half of it over the fourth peg down in the middle. Now your body is going to be facing away from you because as I just said when we take the face off we're going to be flipping this backwards. So you can use a separate hook or C-clip, whatever you need to get your body flipped so that it's face down on the loom. That means if you've used beads, they are showing away from you. They're on the side that is pointed away from you and your ruffles are facing away from you. I'm just gonna squish that down and we have one more thing to do before looping. That is the hair chains. So we're going to have two sets on each side. The first one will take a single orange, wrap one, two, three times, pull it onto five sets, no, four sets of double hair colored orange bands. So that's one and two and three and four. I'll lay this onto your fifth peg down on top of the skin tones that are there. We're going to repeat this for the other side and then we'll make our longer chain. So take your single wrap one, two, three times onto four sets of double bands. One, two, three and four fifth peg down on the other side and the reason that we're going to be flipping this is because if we don't it's going to look like your olive has sideburns the orange is going to show on top of the skin in funny places and we don't want that okay now we're going to make two chains with that each have eight pairs of eight, eight sets of double bands on them. So wrap the first and pull it onto two and then onto seven more sets of two. So this is our second set. So we're going to go up to eight, three, four, five, Six, seven, and eight. And this is going to look a little bit like this side chain that we did because we're going to put it onto the top peg on the side and stretch it down, taking a piece out of each chain. This is a change we can go here. So pull it down and as you're pulling, grab a piece from the next little chain section below, pull it over the second peg down, third section, fourth chain, and the next one will go over the fifth peg down. 
and it's just going to bounce up a little bit there, which is fine. Last one for the other side, and then we can loop, and then we're just about done. Wrap one, two, three, eight sets of double orange bats. That's one, two, Side, so I'm turning the loom around. This will go onto the top peg down on the far side. Grab a piece from each chain as you're stretching down to fit over the corresponding pegs below. Okay, now if you are having a hard time seeing your bands, you can put your hook in under the neck and pull until it's sitting on over another peg. I'm just going to leave it here for now though. You want to get a better angle for you there. Reach through the neck part that we've added on. Get your top two bands and bring them over to the right fifth peg down. The next two are gonna come up and to the left and the last ones are gonna go up. You can loop up the rest of the way in the middle. Just watch for the band with the eye on it shouldn't really be a problem here. And on either side, we're going to be looping up. You're going to start by going for the bottom two skin tones. Push back the rest until you get to the bottom two skin tones. Loop them up. It's a little tension here. Push back all but the bottom two skin tones. And then you're going for the two sets of double orange at the bottom here. Pull that out a little more. And of course from here we'll want to loop into the middle, top middle, come up on the opposite side. Feel free to turn your loom around to pull the bands out. Push back at the bottom too. Bottom two oranges. And bottom two oranges and back into the middle again. Take a single orange band, get it ready on your left hand. With your, your right hand or your dominant hand, take your hook, point the open part away from you and down. Press it through the bands on your top center peg. Grab hold of your securing band, put a little tension on it, and you're going to pull through, turning your hook, the open part of the hook, up and away from you as you're coming up, pull the other side on and pull the far piece over the closer piece and over the end of the hook to create a slip knot. Hold onto that loop or put it on a C-clip or hook if you like and you can take all of off of the loom. Uh oh, something feels loose here. Well, maybe not. No, just loose bands. Just stretchy bands. We're okay. If you do see anything that's loose at this point, you can uh, grab a hold of it on your hook and as you're getting all of off, you can try to secure it by weaving it through some of the other bands and popping it onto a C-clip. But hopefully, hopefully you've got everything and we're okay. okay. So you can see this is the back side, I believe, yes. And on the back side, we're going to put our hook through some nearby bands. Grab the securing band and pull it under. Place it onto a C-clip. We are just about done. Show you a couple finishing touches here. If your beads aren't all showing through on the right side, you can use your hook or your finger to push them to where you want them to be. If you want some extra ruffles around the arms, there are two ways you can do that. One thing you can do is take one, two, or three bats stretch them, bring them over the arm, twist them, and push that to the top. Totally optional there. Um, 
So, and that's also really what we did with the lower part of the cuff as well. The other thing you can do if you want the arms to sit tighter is go through a couple of wrapped bands on the ruffle, stretch them, pull them over the arm. And that will kind of join it there. Also totally optional. I'm going to take that off for the moment though. Um, press your eyes through, adjust your hair. If you, like I can see this is kind of floppy, I'm going to go to the back, find that band if I can. Mm, where is it? Mm, one of these. And you can pull it through till it's a little bit tighter anyway. And that can go onto your C clip as well. Um, what are we missing? I think that's most of it. If you want to secure that hair tighter closer to the body and or the arms if you want to position those. I'll just quickly show you what you can do. Line it up, turn to the back, go under a piece of the dress, maybe it'll go under two, take a piece of the glove, slide it under the dress piece, put it on a C-clip or weave it further across. And that way you can have the arm sitting close to the side. Okay, so I think we've covered everything. I'll lay them down for you to see here. Um, and again, if you didn't do the ruffle as we were looping, at this point you can secure it on after the fact. But let me let me show you what they look like. And we'll wrap this baby up. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you'll check out the rest of my set. I've got most of the characters up now and I'll put this on the playlist. Thanks.